Look at this infinite series that we have here and how many terms involving Euler's constant there are within this infinite series. Well, we've got this term out front, which is e to the three halves, and then every term of the infinite product also has a multiple of e. Well, what if I were to tell you that this infinite series is also related to the mathematical constant pi? Well, I think at first sight, without looking in it, into it more deeply, that would be kind of surprising. And in fact, what we wanna to do today is show exactly how this is related to pi. And this technique I got from a post on the Math Stack Exchange if you wanna check it out. Okay, so let's maybe recall that an infinite product is really the limit of a partial product. So let's write it like that. So we have this is e to the three halves, and then we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity, and then the product as little n goes from two to capital N of, well, the terms that we're taking the product over here of, which is e one, uh, let's see, minus uh, one over n squared raised to the n squared. But now let's observe that I'm taking the product of n minus one things right here. And each of those have a term involving e. So that means I can really factor an e out from all of them, but they mush together into an e to the n minus one. Okay, so let's write that down. So this is e to the three halves, and then we have the limit as n goes to infinity, e to the capital N, and then the product as n goes from two up to infinity of, well, I'm gonna go ahead and write this as n squared minus one over n squared, all raised to the n squared, just by putting that stuff that's in the parentheses together. Okay, so now my next step will be to, well, fix this little typo that I have right here, e to the n minus one, and then factor an, an e to the minus one out of this, that'll leave me with e to the n, and then also factor that difference of squares, that n squared minus one. So we have all of this will simplify to the square root of e. Observe that that's from the e to the three halves and then the e to the minus one that we're pulling out. And then we have our limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then we have an e to the n in here and then a product as little n goes from two up to capital N of, let's go ahead and factor this as n minus one to the n squared times n plus one to the n squared. And then now let's observe that that denominator is in fact n to the two n squared based off of exponent rules there. But now what I'll do is I'm gonna add a two into the exponent in this denominator, but in order to counteract that, I'm gonna multiply by n squared in the numerator. And I'm gonna do that because that allows for a nice simplification if we use the following observation, and that is that two n squared plus two is the same thing as n minus one squared plus n plus one squared. So that's how we're gonna rewrite that two n squared plus two to allow us to split this term in the product into two terms. So let's get that written down. So we have the square root of e, and then we have our limit as capital N goes to infinity. A lot of this stuff is just copying at this point. And then the product as little n goes from two to capital N. Now we're gonna have n minus one to the n squared over n to the n plus one squared times our n plus one to the n squared and then n to the n minus one squared. And then finally we have an n squared kind of left over, if you will. So uh, importantly here, notice that the base is one less than the exponent in the first term, in the numerator and the denominator of the first term, and the base is one more than the exponent in the numerator and the denominator of the second term. So that's gonna allow some telescoping to occur. And let's see that as follows. So we've got our limit as n goes to infinity, 
And then we've got an e to the n. And while we're at it, let's talk through what we get from this n squared term. So observe that that's going to be equal to, well, when n is 2, it's 4. So it's 2 squared times 3 squared times 4 squared, all the way up to capital N squared. Observe that that's simply equal to N factorial squared. So just to reiterate, that comes from this N squared term. And now let's write what's going on with this first term that I'm putting in blue parentheses. So the numerator is going to start at 1 to the 4, and then the next term, term will be 2 to the 9 and then 3 to the 16, and the very, very last term will be capital N minus 1 to the capital N squared. But then the denominator, well, what's that going to be? That's going to start as 2 to the 9 times 3 to the 16, and it's going to end at, let's see, capital N to the capital N plus 1 squared. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And importantly, observe that all of these terms in the numerator cancel almost everything in the denominator, leaving us with simply that one over capital N to the N plus one squared. And now let's kind of in parallel, see what's going on with this bit right here. So it's gonna be essentially the same sort of idea. So notice when N is two, we get 3 to the 4, and then the next one will be uh, 4 to the 9, all and on and on and on, up to uh, capital N plus 1 to the N squared. And then in the denominator, we're going to have something kind of similar. So we'll have 2 uh, to the power 1, and then next will be 3 to the 4, and then the very, very last one there will be capital N raised to the N uh, minus one squared. But now we get a bunch of simplification. We get all of these terms in the numerator, except for the last one, will cancel everything in the denominator. Okay, so just so that we're clear with where we're gonna start the next board. So this bit of our limit is the same. That's what we'll have at the top of the next. And then we'll have this n plus 1 to the n squared over 2 times n to the n plus 1 squared. Okay, so let's get that on the board and then we'll keep going. Okay, so this is where we ended up after rewriting some things. And the very first step I'm going to take is to multiply out this n plus 1 squared in that exponent to, uh, let's see, n squared plus 2n plus 1. And then since we'll have an exponent of n squared in the numerator and the denominator, that'll allow us to put that together. So very, very quickly, we can rewrite this in the following manner. So a bunch of this is going to stay exactly the same. And then here we'll have n plus 1 to the n squared over n to the n squared, giving us 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n squared will be 1 over 2 times n to the 2n plus 1. Okay, nice. And then from this step, we're going to use something that's perhaps not super surprising, and that's something called Stirling's formula, which allows us to replace um, factorials inside of a limit with something that's sometimes a little bit easier to work with. And Sterling's formula says the following. So it says n factorial squared. Actually, often it's written just in terms of n factorial, but since n factorial is being squared here, we'll use it like that. So it grows asymptotically to the following object, and that is 2 pi n to the 2n plus 1 over e to the 2n. Okay, well, that's pretty cool because Notice that if we divide over this 2 uh, times n to the 2n plus 1, then we'll have this left-hand side, n factorial squared over 2 times n to the 2n plus 1 grows asymptotically to pi over e to the 2n. Okay, so let's maybe put all of that together. So we're taking this 
and this and saying that together those grow asymptotically as, well, like I said before, pi over e to the 2n. Okay, nice. But now notice that this e to the n will cancel one of those copies of e to the n in the denominator and we have pi over e to the n. Now let's maybe go ahead and factor the pi out. So we have pi the square root of e and then we're left with the limit as capital N goes to infinity of, so it's gonna be one over e to the n times one plus one over n raised to the n squared. And now I'm gonna rewrite this, not for the rest of the problem, but just for a second to observe that it's a certain type of indeterminate form. So notice that we can rewrite this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of one over E uh, times one plus one over N raised to the N and then all of that raised to the N. And now uh, all of this stuff in the parentheses approaches one, given that that one plus one over N raised to the N approaches E. So this is in fact an indeterminate form of type one to the infinity. But let's maybe give ourselves some more room to calculate this limit. All right, now we can finish this off by attacking the limit that's left over. So I'm gonna set this limit equal to L and then use our standard tricks for um, indeterminate forms of exponential type, which as we discussed before, this is one of those. So we'll take the natural log of L and simplify using logarithm rules. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity, and then this is gonna turn into n squared times the log of one plus one over n, and then minus n. Okay, so I switched the order of subtraction kind of at the same time, but that's okay. But from here, what I wanna do is do a bit of a substitution of variables for our limit, and that substitution will be to set x equal to one over n. So observe if n is going to infinity, x is going to zero from above. So we can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to zero from above of, now we have one over x squared times the natural log of one plus x minus one over x. But of course we can push both of those together and we'll have the limit as x goes to zero of the natural log of one plus x minus x over x squared. But now that's an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. We can apply L'Hopital's rule once and we'll see that this is the limit as x goes to zero from above of one over one plus x and then minus one over two times x. But now that's another indeterminate form of type zero over zero. We can apply L'Hopital's rule one more time to get the limit as x goes to zero from above of, so that's gonna be minus one over one plus x over two. But now as x goes to zero, this pretty clearly goes to negative one half. But that's not the value of our limit, that's the value of the natural log of our limit. So exponentiating both sides, we'll see that our limit is equal to one over the square root of e. It's like equal to e to the minus half. But if that limit is equal to one over root e, and we've got this multiplier of root e in the numerator over here, that means that this term right here cancels this term right here, and we've got our final value, which is pi. And like promised, I was gonna show that this infinite product was related to pi, and in fact, it's not just related to pi, it's exactly equal to pi.